Alrighty, so I just got back home and I thought I'd jump on and talk to you guys for just about a few minutes for our purpose project. How are you guys doing on it? I hope you guys are are going right along with the chapters. Um, we are now on work week about 33. Um, I know that we've been kind of skipping into each week and combining a few weeks and trying to go over it with um, kind of co compounding a few weeks together. But we are absolutely doing great with finding purpose in what God has for us in our lives. And so I was going to just check with you all and see how your purpose project was going. The week 33 is talking about the plan that God has um, for you. And it's coming from Jeremiah 29, 11. And in that scripture, it um, says, For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. And God, I know, just longs for us to have a hope and a future with, with Him. It's really hard on a day-to-day -day basis to just try to figure out, you know, your step for that particular day. And some days are worse than others as far as getting up and trying to have a plan and trying to figure out, you know, I know that God's purpose for me is not just to A, B, whatever that is for you. Go to work, come home, do supper, feed your kids, you know, all the things. But God's purpose for you goes way beyond that. And it we weren't born just to figure it out on our own. But God decided, or, or God says that he's not going to decide that for you. You have to take the initiative. You have to get up and say, okay, today, this is what's on my mind. I need to explore what's on my mind. I need to see if this is what God is asking of me to do. I need to see if, I need, research it. Because a lot of times we are confused and we say, well, I don't know what my purpose is. I don't know what God wants me to do. I don't, we have things that we know that we normally do or we can do or if we studied enough we could do. But the vision for what we need to do is up to us. It's up to us to get up, pay attention. It's up to us to be involved. Um, and a lot of people, I mean, I've heard many say before, well, I just don't know. And I just, I ain't trying to figure it out because I don't have a talent. Well, you know, taking up the offering might be a talent. It is. Or ministering to someone else. It is. Being a good friend to someone that's walking through pain. That's a ministry. Um, it doesn't have to be something grand to be a ministry. But God expects you to step into our calling for what we feel like it is that day. Um, someone may come to you that needs help. Someone may come to you that needs advice. We just don't know what people are walking through. But we need to be in the right heart and in, in, in the right mindset to be able to say, I am earnestly and honestly praying for you. If there's something you're walking through, know that I'm walking it with you. I might not know what you're going through every day, just like you didn't with me, but you are my friend. You are, you are my sister or my brother in Christ. And I'm going to be there and help you through whatever you need to walk through that day. Even if I'm not physically seeing you he has called day. you for a purpose and it doesn't count when we just say that we're a Christian it doesn't count when we don't participate and um really involve ourselves 100 percent with what God has given you he's asking you to not set me a second don't put me on the back burner put me first and then the other things fall behind oh well I have this to do this weekend, or I have that to do this weekend, whatever it may be for you and your family. But God says to make him the priority first, and then everything else will fall 
in line behind that. We are living in a time that is so uncertain and that uh, life can just get to us all sometimes. So, I mean, we're looking at political unrest and, and the way that the earth is going and the, the environmental disasters, inflation and wars, the book says. Um, the news alone is enough to keep you up at night. Um, but we are not to fear. We are not to fear what's going on in this earth. If you're a child of God and you know in your heart that you've asked God to come into your heart and to, and you've opened your Bible, look, Romans 10, 9, you know, know beyond a shadow of a doubt, of a doubt that you are God's child. I, Lord, I ask you into my heart. I want to be your child. I thank you for everything that you've done for me. I thank you for going to Calvary for me that day. And I want to spend eternity with you, eternity with you in heaven. I want to be sure that we are in a place in our hearts and our life and that we are walking hand in hand with the one who gave us the option, because it's an option for you and for me, to make heaven our home. So if you don't choose that option, it's not a pretty sight as to what will come, what we'll have to endure. So don't, don't delay. Don't just be lackadaisical in your walk with Christ and say, uh, I'll go next week. Oh, I've got this to do this weekend. I'm not going to I'm not going to give my time to God this week. Oh, I'll just read some scripture or watch it on TV. God says to never fail to assemble ourselves. I know that life is hard and I know that news is hard and uncertainties are hard. But you know our book again said that but God's ha God has a wonderful promise for us. He's given us, he doesn't promise, promise, look, sorry, that the plan will be easy. He never promised us that. Matter of fact, he said, we're going to have really bad days. We're going to walk through some really dark valleys. And believe me, I've walked through a lot myself and I'm sure you, you have as well and probably still are, but know beyond a shadow of a doubt that God's walking with you. He, is, he does promise us that he will give us hope for our future. He will give us plans that will help us to prosper. And he promised us that he would walk with us every step of the way. All that we have to do is to be faithful and committed to where we are and who we serve, especially in the days that we walk in today. We have hope for our future. We have prosperity for our future. And that doesn't just mean on this earth. That means that we have prosperity to look forward to. That when Christ comes again, that no matter what, we're going to be caught up, as the Bible says. Instead of the rapture, it actually says caught up to be with God. Caught up. I know life gets so in the way. I get it. I, I promise you, I get it. I've walked it. I've lived it. I've worked it. You know, life happens, as it says. Um, in Hebrews chapter, let me look, 10 verses 38 and 39. Let me just read that to you. It says, but my righteous one will live by faith and take no pleasure in the one who shrinks back. Don't pull back from God. Um, God covers you with grace, even when you have failure, but you have to try. He doesn't appreciate when we shrink back, when we don't try, when we don't give it our all, when we are not all in. He expects us to be all in as Christians. So we have to try to obtain grace. So God doesn't do our work for us. Passivity doesn't work with God. He doesn't like us to be passive about the person that's going to give us eternal life. 
He doesn't like that. He wants us to be all for him. He wants us to push forward and show people and tell people who he is, what he is, what he did for them. So God matches our effort. So if you're putting in zero, guess what God's going to give you? Zero. So God will match your efforts. So if you're a Christian and you know that you are supposed to be serving, know that God expects of you what you expect of him. He matches our efforts. He wants us to be assertive. He wants us to be active. He wants us to be happy and telling people about what he has done for you and for me. In our Also in our study this week, you know, it asked us about anxiety and stress and what are you feeling in your heart and your life. And a lot of you that have walked this journey with me have known that I have been um, through a grief journey. Um, for the past two and a half years with my parents, um, l losing several fa family members within the last three years. So anxiety and stress um, comes along with that. It comes along with caregiving. It comes along with being the person that is loving on the people that need you the most. So our book asks us, what is it that makes you the most anxious? What is it that makes you the most stressed. And I was looking at the book this week and it, it said that, and I said, not having a plan. My worst thing is not having a plan, not knowing my vision. Um, I'm okay with, with having a schedule. I'm okay with having a plan. I don't have to be like verbatim to the point. I just need to kind of know what's going to happen kind of know what's going on. And that makes me kind of deal with things a little bit easier. But sometimes in the life that we're living in our journeys, we don't always have that. We don't always know the answers to those questions. So when he says for us to fully trust, fully obey, fully you, give up. You know, I, I talked to a good, a fr good friend of mine tonight and um, she made the statement, and it's so true. She said, you know, it's not always happy. You can be in front of people and be happy, laughing and having a good time. But when you go home and you're just in your own thoughts, in your own life situations, you pause. And sometimes it's not pretty. So we need to be sure that even though in the moments that it's not pretty and that we don't know what's going to happen the next and we don't know what we're going to face tomorrow, that but we have, we are warriors for God. We are warriors for our family. We are warriors for our own personal walk. Know that we are in the purpose of God, for the purpose of God, and he will give us our purpose in God. So pray trust. over whatever it is that's hindering you and making you shrink back. Remember, God needs us to move forward, not to regress back. He will meet us where we meet him. So be sure to address the anxiety. Tell him what you feel. Um, I know I sure did. I laid it out some days and I was like, oops, sorry, Lord, I didn't mean to just be so upset. But you know what? Those are the times when I got up from my knees that I felt the strongest. So do that for yourself. And if you have to have a good cry, do. If you have to have a good prayer, do. If you have to set yourself a, a time just for yourself, to reflect. So do that. It's really going to be important. Don't worry about anybody else. Worry about yourself right now. Get yourself fixed. You can't fix anything. You can't be there for anybody else till you fix yourself. So I'll meet you next week for God's way. Because he has a plan. Promise.
I'll see you next week.